Hello everyone, my name is Rohit and welcome back to another video on Next.js. In this video, we are going to build an authentication UI using Next.js 13 and Tailwind CSS. Well, you can see the UI on your screen. The text has a smooth animation effect and the UI looks stunning. You can navigate to the signup screen by clicking the signup link. The signup screen has many input fields, including the date of birth field. It looks like a professional website because the UI is also responsive. So without any further delay, let's see how to build this project. I started a Next.js app and these are my default settings for this project. Next I opened the app in Visual Studio code, but before writing the code, let's run this project using the command npm run dev. Ok this is the default rendering of the Next.js app. Now if you go to the page.js file which is inside the app directory, you will find the default code of Next.js. This is the code of what we saw just now in the browser, but we are going to delete this code. Next inside the app directory, I am going to add two folders, one for the sign in screen and another for the sign up screen. Inside both of these newly created directories, I am going to create a javascript file named page.js. Here I will add a simple sign in function component, then I will import the sign in component to the main home component. After saving the file, I can check the browser tab to see the hello text. Next inside the sign up file, I will paste the sign in component code and change the name of the component to sign up. Now what I want is a custom background with a gradient effect. For this go to the global.css file and delete the default code. Here we are going to add some piece of code for the custom background color for our application. You are free to customize the background color so feel free to play with it. This looks weird for now, but we are going to fix this soon. Now head over to the sign in component and start writing some code. You just have to follow the video. Step by step, we are going to build a decent looking responsive authentication UI using Next.js and Tailwind CSS. Now save the file and check your browser. The background looks cool with a cool gradient effect. This is our sign in UI goal, right? Now to make it simpler, I am going to divide the UI into two sections, the left section and the right section. The left section will contain the logo image and the brand text and the right section will hold the sign in part. For a clearer understanding, we have the main element. Inside the main element, we have added two sections one on the left and one on the right. We have applied the CSS classes flex and flex column to the main element. 
Since we have only added two sections, we will see a column layout on the screen. If we were to add a third section, we would continue to have a column layout because of the flex column class. However, in this case, we only require two sections, so we will continue with that configuration. The item center and justify center CSS classes are used to keep the content in the center of the screen. Now let's add an image for our logo. For this, create a images folder inside the public directory. Inside the image folder, add your logo file. Next I am going to add the brand name. Here you can add the brand image if you want. I set the CSS class of text to white and text font to bold. You can see that our logo is at the top left and the brand name which is my channel's name is at the center of the screen. But this looks very normal. Now let's add some effect. Now when you hover over the mouse cursor, the text will show the transition animation effect. I also use the ease in art CSS class to make this effect smoother. It looks cool. Now we will write the code for the right section of the screen. We start by creating a section component that takes up the whole screen and display its content in the center. Then we start a div component inside the section that contains our form. We give it some padding, rounded corners, a shadow effect and a white background. We also made sure that it does not take up more than a certain width. Next we created another div component inside the first one that contains our title. We centered it horizontally and give it some margin above. We also used a h2 component to display the title text. We made the text bigger, bolder and darker than normal. Next we have this container element. It's the div with a bunch of classes. Basically it helps to center our content on the page. It looks great on both large and small screen. Next we are setting up a form. It's a form tag with a class called space y6. This class adds some nice spacing between elements inside the form. Nothing too complicated, just make things look neat and clean.
Now for the email input field, we have a label that says email address right above it. This is for accessibility and clarity. The actual input field has a bunch of classes that make it look cool. It's rounded, has no visible border and even a shadow for the modern touch. When you click on it, it gets the nice blue highlight. It's user friendly and visually pleasing. Moving on to the password input field, it's pretty much the same deal. We have got a label saying password and beneath it an input field that matches the style of the email field. Oh and there is a forget password link in case your users need it. First we have a div element that wraps our button. 
This is just a container that helps us position the button on the page. Next we have a button element that has a type attribute set to submit. This means that when we click on this button, it will submit the form data to the server. The most important part of the code is the class name attribute of the button element. This is where we add all the Tailwind CSS class that make our button look nice and responsive. You don't need to memorize all these classes. You can just use the Tailwind CSS documentation or the Tailwind CSS playground to find the ones you need. Next we are going to add sign in with Google and sign in with Apple button. Here I will use the SVG image. The SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. To use this, head over to the Bootstrap icon website. I will add the link to this website in the description below. We are going to use this SVG HTML code in our project to render the Google logo image. Now copy the sign in with google button code and paste it just below it and replace it for the apple sign in button. This is not looking good. Let's customize the CSS classes for both these buttons. Now it looks decent. I 
at last we will add a paragraph text as if the user is new the user can click here and it will navigate the user to the sign up screen Now we are done with the login UI. I guess you should test it out and let me know how it looks in the comment section. And make sure to subscribe to this channel and be a part of the growing developer community. If you click on sign up now link, we should be navigated to the sign up screen. But this is not happening because I made a blunder. Many of you did not commit this mistake. I named the sign up folder sign up.js. If you also did this then fix it and make it sign up and we are good to go. Now if you check your browser you will see that our navigation is working fine. Now we will write the code for the sign up screen. Because our sign up code has a lot of common functionality with the sign in page. We will first copy the sign in page code and paste it carefully to the sign up page code. Of course we will do some customization since it is a sign up screen. Oh, I forgot to import the image component to the sign up page so import it and this error will be gone. Our sign up screen has many input fields such as first name, last name, email address, password, confirm password and date of birth. So we can either add these input fields one by one or use the world famous development technique of copy pasting. However the copy paste technique requires some common sense so we will do it smartly. First I copy the email div element container and paste it just over it. I will modify it a bit for the first name input field. Next I copy the first name div element container and paste it just below it. I will customize it for the last name input field. Ok this looks cool. But the div element container looks weird. Let's add a padding top to make it look more professional. Now we will smartly add the password and confirm password input field to the sign up screen.
The last input field we will add is the date of birth field. So let's add this. When you visit the professional website, you will notice that they have a checkbox for accepting the terms and condition and privacy policy. We will also add this checkbox functionality to our application. We will use the use state hook in react to manage the state. Here we have two states. The first one represents when the checkbox is empty and the other state is when we click on the checkbox marking it as checked. We use the use state to inform the app whether the checkbox has been clicked or not. Initially we set the state to false because we want the checkbox to be unclicked initially. When the user clicks on it, the state changes and the checkbox is marked as clicked.
the UI is looking odd, but the checkbox is working as expected. Let's fix the UI. I messed up with the spelling of flex. Fix this and this will fix our UI. Ok now test your application and let me know in the comment section. Ok that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed doing this project. If yes, then you know the drill. Like, share and subscribe to this channel to be a part of the developer community. And if you have any issues related to this video, then you can comment here or DM me on my social media handles. The links are down below in the description. Thanks for watching and see you in the next Nexus video.